Apple's released quite a few new phones this year, the iPhone XS and XS Max, which I've already tested on my channel, and then six different flavors of this guy, the iPhone XR. Basically Apple's budget phone with the price of a flagship. I asked on Twitter which color of the iPhone XR I should test today, and it was a close call, but the peachy coral version was chosen as tribute, which is kinda good because our brand new blue friend isn't even turning on this morning. He's got a little bit of performance anxiety. I'll plug him in and we'll start with Peachy. Let's get started. Inside the box we have the standard slow charger, along with the lightning headphones that you can't use anywhere else, and the proprietary lightning cord, with no dongle for the missing headphone jack. Let's start with the scratch test, the one feature that gets used more than anything else on a smartphone by far is the screen. The biggest downside of the iPhone XR, besides being a flagship price budget phone, is the screen. There's been a 1080p resolution standard across computer screens, TVs, and cell phones for the past three years. Staying healthy. Even the iPhone 6 Plus, released four years ago, had a super defined 1080p display. But Apple here sneakily dropped the iPhone XR from a high definition 1080p screen down to just 828. You can always say iPhone users just don't really care about specs, but there's a line that got crossed when Apple takes advantage of that and keeps the high price of $800 after tax while handing out hardware from five years ago. Glass is still glass though and scratches at a level six with deeper grooves at a level seven. Apple's never been a leader in screen resolution, but going backwards in technology is a slap in the face to unsuspecting customers. There's one seven megapixel front facing camera hidden up in the notch along with a metal earpiece grill, very solidly attached, and won't ever be coming out on its own. Another difference between the XS and XR is the build material. While the more expensive XS is made from stainless steel, the regular expensive XR is made from softer aluminum. Anodized aluminum. Anodizing is a pretty amazing process where the metal is dipped and electrically coated in a super hard protective layer of oxide and can literally be any color we want, so it makes the color matching look pretty sweet. Even the SIM card tray with no expandable memory slot got dipped in the same anodizing bath. The buttons are made from metal, along with the top of the phone, and the mute switch slider over here on the side. I still think every phone should have one of these switches. The volume buttons are made from metal, and the bottom of the phone, right next to that missing headphone jack, is also metal. The only thing down here is the lightning port and the little metal grills for the loudspeaker and microphone. The back of the iPhone XR is made from glass, still has that wireless charging. I think the coloring is a great idea and definitely adds a nice splash of uniqueness to the smartphone world. If the Apple logo gently glowed for notifications like it does on the Razer phone, it would look even cooler. The flash is under the back glass and protected, along with the little wire microphone grill, which now brings us up to the camera. Apple's cameras are incredibly good. Just remember though that the screen on this iPhone XR can't show all the pixels your camera captures when you use it. Kinda blows my mind. Let's say you take a picture and post it to Instagram. Instagram publishes images in 1080 pixel blocks. The iPhone XR is 252 pixels short of that and literally can't show Instagram pictures at full quality. This is an $800 phone that can't even social media write. Not to mention Apple is still advertising a sapphire lens cover protecting the camera, which should scratch at a level eight or nine on most scale of hardness, yet we are still seeing heavy marks at a level six, seven, and eight. Other sapphire manufacturers like this Tissot watch face manage pure sapphire just fine. The Tissot sapphire has no scratches below a level eight. It's kind of messed up that with Apple, you aren't getting what you pay for on so many levels. The phones are very pretty though, no doubt about that. But if all you want is just beautiful surface level aesthetics, or just wanna cover up the Apple logo, just spend a few dollars and slap a dbrand skin on your current phone. Then use the rest of the money you had saved to literally book a round trip ticket to Hawaii. You can get to Hawaii and back from basically anywhere in the USA for the price of this phone. The inexpensive skins are linked in the description. Huge thanks to dbrand for sponsoring this video and inspiring colorful phones everywhere. Not to mention, if you purchased basically any other phone in the past three years, you'll be able to Instagram at full quality on your trip. You might be like, but Jerry, what about YouTube? Is the YouTube app still gonna work okay with this lower resolution screen? Yeah, it works. 
720p is just fine. It'll even pretend to let you select 1080p. And of course, the XR will use your data to stream that 1080 into your phone, but you won't get the high definition displayed on your screen. The pixels just aren't physically there to do it. Of course, if you see someone who has or loves this phone, there's no need to make fun of them. Remember, they are just 252 pixel rows short of the full picture, and not quite all the way there hardware-wise if you catch my drift. The iPhone XR is a 6.1 inch, 828 by 1792 IPS LCD and lasted 10 seconds under the heat from my flame, going completely black and turning off. It's kind of a risk to burn pixels on the 10R when it doesn't have any to spare in the first place, but they all did make it back to life with a full recovery. Now it's time for the bin test. Apple is using the stronger 7000 series aluminum on the iPhone 10R, so it should be solid, but the only way to find out for sure is with a structural flex. Bending from the front yielded no movement in the phone, no kinks in the frame or bending in the body, Bending from the back got the slightest of flexes, but nothing to get excited about. Our little orange friend is built like a solid, low-resolution brick. If Apple charged $500 or maybe even $600 for this hardware, I'd be pretty pumped. But charging $800 after tax for this is like robbing an old folks home. Yeah, it's easy, and your targets won't notice, but it's just wrong. Apple didn't get to be a trillion-dollar company by selling stuff at a fair price, though, so it is what it is. The 10R is structurally sound, even if the sapphire isn't pure and the screen automatically downgrades Instagram and YouTube, it does pass my durability test. I'll probably give away this unharmed blue iPhone XR over on my Twitter or Instagram, so come hang out over there for the giveaway. You can always sell it and buy yourself a real phone. Customize your current phone with a dbrand link in the description, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.